I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. UBAT has released version 3.0 of the firmware for their LaForge diversity module. It's got a ton of new features. It's really cool, and I'm really excited to show it to you. That's what we're going to be looking at today. No, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. Hang on. Uh, Furious, Fur Furious FPV. That's what I meant to say. Furious has released version 3.6 of their firmware for their diversity module. That's what we're gonna be looking at today. Oh, let's just look at both of them. I wanna start this video by telling you that this is not intended as a review or any kind of head-to-head -head shootout of these two modules. I do have a whole bunch of testing I've done on these modules, uh, granted on previous firmware versions, and I feel like that you should be able to make a decision as to which one you wanna buy based on that. I'll sum up the results and tell you in almost every test I've done, these modules have been very close together in performance. That's my opinion. If you, everybody has different opinions and you can go watch an hour of testing if you really want to make your own decision, you're welcome to do that. I feel like their RF performance is very close. The only time I can think of where I feel like I saw a substantial difference between them was in an interference test where it seemed like the LaForge did a little bit better at rejecting interference when you have two transmitters that are very close together. Like, for example, if you're at a race and, and you've got like six pilots in the air and there's not as much spacing as, as you might like. The LaForge did a little bit better. But I have to say, it was just one test. I know the guys who are, love LaForge are sad to hear me say that. If there's anything I've learned from testing these modules, from testing antennas, it's that doing RF testing well and consistently is really freaking hard. And I, I don't feel like there's a consistent winner between these, at least not in terms of pure RF performance. So don't let the fact that I'm not doing any kind of RF head-to-head -head worry you too much. And I, I have to acknowledge that Furious at least says, oh, we've improved the, the granularity of our RSSI measurement. Our diversity algorithm is a lot better. Maybe so. I'm not even going to go there today. I just will acknowledge that they say it and we'll get on with looking at the actual interfaces. And here in the LaForge right now, we're looking at the screensaver. The screensaver can actually be any number of things. I like to put my initials up there because I'm a narcissist. Uh, because I'm, I'm branding. Yes, that's it. <laughs> uh, but you can put your custom call sign up there using the LaForge firmware flashing and configuration app. This is an app you can download from the UBAD website and, and you can flash and upload your own, your own logo if you want to. Uh, if I hold down the middle button, it will select between the different uh, screensavers. So let's take a look at what we've got. So here's one of the screensavers, and it's got the, the, the main module and the diversity module. It's got the RSSI from both of them depicted as a line. If I put my hand here, oh, you can't see that I'm doing it. I'm putting my hand next to one of them to make the signal strength change. You can see the signal strength go up and down. So that, that lets you see the signal strength for your directional antenna your, and your circular antenna. If you wanted to do any kind of like analysis, I just think it looks cool. If I hold down that middle button again, We've got basically these are the same thing. They're just depicting it a little bit differently. You know, it just depends on which one you like the look of. Going up and down. Oh, left and right. Oh, that's actually, I, I actually hadn't seen that one before. It goes left and right depending on which one is stronger. And you can have your channel and your call sign and your pilot logo. Now you can see this whole time down here, we do have the channel number that we're on and we've got the RSSI in absolute uh, value here. If I go into the menu, you can see that the menus have also been improved. You've got animated menus with icons, and that's pretty freaking cool. Also notice that over here on the left, you can see where you can come back now. You can see where you are in the menu as you step down. Uh, I suppose that would be helpful if you sort of memorized where they are, although I personally I sometimes just, I'm like, uh, which am I looking for? I'm just sort of scrolling through randomly trying to find the one I'm looking for. Now, the options you've got here are similar uh, to the ones you used to have, but there's also a couple new ones. Let's take a look at them. The first one we'll look at is just the channel mode. And of course, that lets you step through the channels, right? Now, notice that as I step through the channels, I'm staying within the same band. And if I hold down the button, it switches bands. In frequency mode, we can pick 
an individual frequency. And this has borrowed some of the features from the RF analyzer firmware that UBAD made, because in frequency mode, if I press up, notice that I'm moving in literally one megahertz increments. So you can literally tune in to the exact frequency that your transmitter is on. Maybe some, some transmitters may be a little bit off on their center frequency. And if you want to, you can home it in to get the exact frequency that you're looking for. If I hold down the button, it'll skip. You see it's skipping now in 10 megahertz increments. So you can scroll quickly through the band to find the channel you're looking for, and then use individual clicks to get the exact frequency you want. Now favorites is your favorites, and you save the favorites. You see I've got Fat Shark 1 and Race Band 2 saved. There has been an improvement to favorites though, and that is if I go back to the channel mode, if you want to add a favorite, like for example, I'll add Race 6. It used to be that in the LaForge you would like hold down two seconds to add or remove a favorite and three seconds to save, and it was a little confusing trying to hold down the button the exact right length of time. What you can do now is you can, if I hold that button down, it says favorite added. If I hold it down again, it says favorite removed. There's no confusion there as to how long you have to hold the button down. Next we have band scan mode. And I confess to being a little confused at first as to what band scan mode did. As near as I can tell, it's similar to the frequency mode in that you step through. You see I'm stepping through the A band here, A1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. You step through those modes and I can skip free, uh, bands as well by holding down the button to go up or down a band. So you can see over here on the left side, I'm, I'm moving through the bands. Uh, and I guess the thing that it's doing that's different than the frequency mode is that it's scanning the whole time and showing you which channels have strong signal strength on them. So if you want to look for a channel, you can, okay, I can see that E band. Okay, so I'll go down and then I'll skip over to E2 or E3. Uh, E1, which I can see has signal. So it, it lets you pick a channel manually, but it lets you see which channels have strong signal on them. Well, what if you just want it to pick the channel for you? That's where the spectate mode comes in. This is, this is a feature that I first saw uh, in the Achilles firmware. Well, no, that's not true. I think I first saw this in the, I think maybe the Trudy was the first to do this with their working channel set. But basically the way this works is when you select the mode, it scans through the frequencies and then it creates a channel set of only the frequencies that are currently in use. Now, let me get it to search again. Now that's interesting. It's Oh, it's because I don't have any antennas on here. It's not picking up my, my Fat Shark 1 transmitter, which is very weak, and that's because I don't have any antennas on. Let me just put an antenna on here real quick. I've got a VAS ION antenna I've been playing with. Um, and if I just put an antenna on here, it'll find the so hold down the button to rescan. Oh, no. There we go. Spectate mode. And hold down the button to rescan. There we go. E2, E1, race 7. Still didn't pick up Fat Shark 1, though, did it? Huh. Very interesting. Let me just make sure that I'm not wrong about this. Let me go to favorites and put myself on Fat Shark 1. Yeah, you can see the RSSI is quite strong. Let me, if I move the goggle just a little, it gets even stronger. Let me just do one more scan here. Spectate. Hold down the button to research. No, no, it's not. I mean, what it's doing, it must be coming in on a close frequency, but just not hitting the exact right frequency. So this is a pretty cool feature in that, like, for example, if you're at a race and you don't know what channel set they're using, you can just do the spectate and it'll build a channel set based on who it sees in the air at the moment and then you can skip between them. But this is a problem that has plagued goggles pretty much forever, and that is figuring out exactly what channel they're on when the channels can be so close together, it's tricky. And, and the this auto scan modes like this don't always get the exact right channel. The quad finder uses just the directional antenna to help you locate your quad. So the idea is that you'll hold the goggles like this. You'll look at the LaForge, you see? So you'll look at it and you'll have your directional antenna here and you'll you move them around and point them and you'll look at the signal strength changing here, so you can home in on your, uh, with a directional antenna, you can home in on which direction your quad is, is if you've lost your quad, for example. This is a really cool thing that uh, the, the LaForge is uniquely suited to because it has the separate diversity and main module. So you can have the main module here where you're looking at the signal strength, the, the uh, directional antenna here, and be zooming around. This is not easy to do with the True D because you know, if you're going to hold the directional like this, you can't see 
the signal strength here. It's not as easy to do. Now the RF analyzer has been really improved. It's pretty freaking cool what they've done. It looks at first glance like the RF analyzer always has been, but look right here, you see minus 25 and plus 25. And if I hold down the center button, it goes minus 50 and plus 50, minus 75. So basically I am widening out the scale or homing in the scale to get more, more uh, resolution, more granularity. So now I can see at the minus 100, I can see the two transmitters I've got here. And now if I just press up to move the center bar, no, I'm going the wrong way. No, I went too far. There we go. So if I move that center bar to home in on them, I can then zoom in to see the shape of the, I don't know, that's pretty cool. What's it good for? I don't know, but it's pretty freaking cool. Now let's take a look at the TrueD version 3.6 firmware. And the first thing you'll see is that they also have a kind of a screensaver now. They just have the one, it doesn't have all the options like the LaForge one does. And I think the LaForge one looks a little bit nicer to my eyes. Um, but um, this one certainly packs a lot of information on the screen. You can see the channel, you can see the call sign, and then it'll scroll here, and that's pretty slick, and show the, the frequency. Here we can see an, an indication of which antenna is getting the higher RSSI historically, and of course, the individual readout. If we go into the menu, uh, the, the Trudy also has an animated menu similar to the, what the LaForge did. I like that the Trudy's menu scrolls sideways uh, because it means that you can see the options that are coming. I think the LaForge's menu looks a little cleaner. It seems to have like thinner lines, I guess. I don't know, but I do like the sideways scrolling from the Trudy's uh, menu um, because it lets you see what's coming. The modes for the Trudy, I don't think are radically different than they were in the 3.5 firmware. Uh, so you've got the saved channel mode, that's like favorites. You've got all channels where you can skip between them. Let's take a look at that. Here in the all channels mode, you can see uh, the same sort of grid type layout. This grid type layout was actually pioneered, I think, in the RF analyzer firmware from LaForge, and then it showed up in the Furious firmware as well. Uh, many people, the Furious firmware is the first place that they saw it because they didn't install the RF analyzer firmware from LaForge. Um, but it's got the grid layout where you have the individual bands. You can skip between them, uh, sk skip within the band by going up or down, and you can see as I go up or down, it continues to scroll through the entire frequency space. And as I do that, it does show the signal strength on each of the individual bands or in individual channels, but there isn't a way to just scan through all of them and show the signal strength. And also you can see that as I come back to the mode, the, uh, the signal strength indicators here are, uh, are removed. Now it is, it is showing which channels are saved. So you can see that this channel has a little like a, a floppy drive icon, and that means it's saved, so that when I go to saved channels, there they are, they're the only two channels that I've saved. And of course I can add or remove channels by long pressing. So if I go to all channels, and I pick a channel, and I hold down the button, I get the option to save it, and I can also delete it. The smart search uh, scans the entire band and builds a, a channel set of which channels have signal on them. And then you can see that as I skip around, it's only going to those channels. So this is similar to the spectate mode that we saw in the LaForge. Finally, we've got the band scanner here. And the band scanner looks pretty nice. It doesn't have the adjustability that the LaForge did. So you can see we've got these two transmitters here and they're sort of right on top of each other and they're kind of getting squished together. Whereas on the LaForge, we could kind of zoom in and separate them out from each other. I do like that the TrueD band scanner shows, there you go, you see, it shows you the top frequency and the top signal strength on each pass. That's kind of cool. Especially because the Trudy band scanner is going all the way down to 5300 because it's supporting low band. This huge swath of scan here from 5300 up to 5945, it doesn't give you a lot of resolution because everything is sort of squeezed into this tiny space. So all that being said, which one's best? Because that's what you all want to know. Uh, and the answer is, um, well, right now I'm liking the LaForge. I'll just be honest with you. I think the LaForge 3.0 uh, firmware is more polished than the True D 3.6 firmware. Uh, I, I think it has a cleaner interface 
and I like some of the features, the way it presents the features better, especially the RF analyzer and the manual frequency uh, setting. Those are the kind of options that a, a nerd like me is really into. That being said, I do love the, the sort of ergonomics of the True D. Every time I have to do a firmware update and I, go, I have to pull this sucker out, it's so much easier to pull out just a single module compared to the LaForge, which I have to I have the wire issue, right? And it's it's just a real hassle. Also, the True D is really securely in here. It, the way it clips in, if you have one, you know, it clips in really securely. So when I stuff this in my, my backpack, my low pro backpack with the antennas on there, I feel really confident that it's not gonna get knocked off and knocked about. Whereas this, the LaForge, it's it's in there pretty securely, but sometimes when I pull it out of the backpack, the antenna's gotten banged, it's gotten pulled on a little bit, it's gotten a little looser. I wish the little forge was a little more secure. Although half the time when I pull the freaking Trudy out, it's so tight it pops out and I bend the pins. So I guess you just can't win. Um, I don't, I honestly don't think you can pick a loser between them, but I have to say right now. I'm using the little forge more often than I'm using the true D because I really dig the interface on the 3.0. So there you go. Uh, that's my little introduction to uh, these two new firmwares. If you have any version of the LaForge all the way back to the very first version one with the little clicky wheel instead of the buttons, you can put 3.0 firmware on there right now. And this is a really cool thing that UBED has done. They've managed to maintain backwards compatibility for all of their hardware. Whereas the LaForge, I know you can put it on the 3. I'm, I think you have to have the 3.0 hardware. I apologize if that's not correct. Please do your own research. I've got links down in the video description to where you can download and up install these firmwares for yourself if you want to. But uh, Furious has never seemed to be as committed to backwards compatibility. And it means that somebody buys like, you know, a 2.0 module and then the new firmware comes out and they can't run it. And, and you know, that's a little bit upsetting. You bet so far has never done that. That's pretty exciting. But whichever one you've got, you should go ahead and install this. There's really no reason not to. Better performance, new features, uh, and an animated UI. Well, the motors of my quads are telling me it's time to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy flying.